Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we looked at the Retro Shooter. It's a plug and play light gun solution. And I got a lot of great comments on that video. And there was one in particular that stood out to me. And I'm gonna read it right now for you because I kind of was like, man, maybe I need to do something about this. It said, I have a Sindon, but I kind of want this, the Retro Shooter. The Sindon is such a pain. Even when I set it up, it magically stops working because of an update or something. A lot of time tinkering and not a lot of time playing and troubleshooting, things like that. So that was the general gist of the comment. And there were a couple other comments like that too, almost saying, hey, I invested in these Sindons, but they're not really easy to get set up. And I kind of do agree with that. It does take some skill in understanding how a gun like this interacts with MAME or another emulator. So what I decided to do was look, is there any plug and play images out there? And I came across a Batocera image that actually does say it's plug and play. So what we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna kind of briefly go over the image itself. See, is this something where you can truly power it up and it will plug and play with the light guns? Uh, and then see what kind of experience we can get out of it. And then I'm gonna show you, sort of, how to build this on your own using the same parts I did. Now keep in mind, I'm not your customer support, so if you have problems with this, and you deviate from my exact build, then I can't really help you, but it does work out of the box with the build that I'm gonna show you. It's a little overkill, but you'll get there when we get there. But anyways, let's jump right into it. All right, so I just finished burning the image to an M.2 drive. I put it in my little micro PC. I got the Sindon gun plugged in, so we'll see. Will it actually boot up and recognize the Sindon and work out of the box as promised? Okay, so the image is all booted up and you can see it actually automatically puts the white border on the image and I can freely move you know, my cursor or my crosshairs around, no problem. So it does deliver on the fact that it's plug and play out of the box as far as recognizing the gun. Now keep in mind, this image also says it's out of the box support for gun for IR. Now my gun for IR guns are actually back at RPEG Electronics getting redone. So. I wanted to do some of the more modern recent updates to them. So I'm gonna actually do a subsequent video on gun for IR. But for this video, this is about plug and play Sindon. So, so far, so good. It does have a controller support. I would say like an Xbox uh, compatible controller is usually okay. And you can scroll through uh, the games list here. So let's try, uh, let's try Time Crisis and see how that works. Now I don't have any pedal connected or anything like that right now. So we're not gonna have um, that capability. So we're gonna duck uh, with the gun and that's automatically gonna be mapped hopefully uh, to a button on the Sindon. All right, so let's give Time Crisis a shot. Again, like I said, everything should be out of the box working. There shouldn't really be anything we have to do. You can put in coins by pressing this button right here. And then, all right, there we go. I'm gonna put the volume up a little bit so you can hear it. So you can see with the Sindon, the tracking's really good. You got your white border already there. It's all pre-configured for you. Now this is stuff, if you were playing this in Windows, you'd have to go set that up manually. The cool thing about this image is you don't have to mess with that. So, I mean, a lot of people I think that are having problems with Sindon are having problems because they haven't set up the software right or they haven't mapped the gun in each of the games they're playing now there's a lot of games on here and various different systems again you navigate it with the controller but you know there's a bunch of things on here there's duck hunt there's versus hogan's alley wild gunman there, there's a bunch of really great games zombie raid alien 3 the gun area 51 we'll try that one out real quick the only issue i have with this the volumes can really fluctuate on some of these roms too i'm not sure why this one's considerably louder than the other one so I'll put in credits and let's let's give this one a go. I did notice most of the games maintain the original aspect ratio, which is good. If I compare it to the retro shooter, obviously it's, it's, it's much more accurate than the retro shooter. Now I can also shut off the crosshairs. If you go into, if you have a keyboard connected, you can hit tab and go to crosshair options and then say visibility never. Now I'd like to do this just to see how well it works without the crosshairs. Cause you know, the crosshairs kind of sometimes make the game not feel natural if you compare it to the arcade version. So let's see how it works without the crosshairs, if we can maintain some accuracy. A little less accurate, but let's try a little bit more here and see if we can get it any better. Oh, I missed them. Yeah, it's a little harder actually, to be honest, without the crosshairs. But there's a lot of factors that go into Sindon, like, the, like I said before, the lens. If there's any glare on the lens, 
from any lighting in your room, it can totally throw the whole thing off. So I have actually played it with the Sindon and it's been fairly accurate without the crosshairs, but uh, in this particular time I just tested it, I'd say it worked better with the crosshairs enabled. Uh, there's a couple games on this image that don't work real well, um, but you know, that's it's all pre-configured so you kind of get what you get. I'm trying to think of another game that I thought played pretty well on here. Uh, I didn't try Jurassic Park, I know that's a favorite. I didn't try Jurassic Park on my last light gun video, so we'll do it. I'm not like a huge fan of this game for some reason, I know a lot of people are, but this game's just like okay to me. Oh whoa, yeah. That Cursor on this is kind of wackadoodle. Very sensitive, I'm not sure what's up with that. There might be a setting to tweak this, but kind of all over the place, man. Okay, th this this is just not, this is not very fun. All right, let's forget about Jurassic Park. Some of these images, you know, it's not flawless. You're not guaranteed like this awesome experience every time. Dude, let's do um, Operation Wolf, one I, I, I really like this game. Classic light gun game, everyone likes Operation Wolf. Let's give that a shot. Okay, see Operation Wolf seems pretty accurate, so that's good. Yeah, Operation Wolf's great. This is awesome. Like I said, not every gun game is gonna be great on this image, but this one's good. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other ones. So, you know, a lot of people want the more advanced gun games, you know, like the stuff on Naomi or, or Dreamcast. Let me see, they have, they have some of that on here. There's some PlayStation games on here. Some of these work, some of these don't work that great. There's uh, some Naomi games, Confidential Mission. I know Confidential Mission didn't play that well on the retro shooter. So let's see if it plays okay on this. I haven't actually tried it yet. I'm sure in the Battlesera image, there's ways to maintain the proper aspect ratio. I just haven't played with it. I don't know this, this enough to know. Get the center of the target and gun will be adjusted. Okay. Okay, so far much better than the way the retro shooter played this game. So that's good. And, and keep in mind, I don't have the crosshairs on. It's working pretty good. All right, so see what I mean? Like, you're, some of the good games run great and some of them don't. You just gotta kinda play with it and test it out. But I will say, does it work out of the box with the Sindon? It does. So if you're someone that's, this thing's been sitting there collecting dust, better to play some games than no games, right? So whenever I do videos like this, people ask what games are on it. So there's a bunch of games on here. Maximum Force, you know, Operation Thunderbolt, Operation Wolf, Operation Wolf 3, Point Blank 1 and 2, Police Trainer, you know, a lot of really great ones. Revolution X, a lot of great shooting games. I'll scroll through the list. Space Gun's a great one. Steel Gunner 1 and 2, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Who doesn't love that? Time Crisis, like I showed you already. So there's a lot of great games, but everyone always asks for like Virtua Cop. Where's Virtua Cop? Well, they don't have the main like port or the main official version of Virtua Cop, but if you scroll over to the Sega Saturn, it, they do have the Sega Saturn versions of Virtua Cop 1 and 2, as well as the original House of the Dead. Now, if you're looking for House of the Dead 2, they do have the Dreamcast version of House of the Dead 2 as well. So there's some really great games packed in here. But like I said, it's plug and play out of the box. Now, if you're really good at customizing Batocera, you can go in here and tweak a bunch of things. I'm relatively new to it, so I couldn't sit here and give you a tutorial on all of the settings you can do here. Like if you go into game settings, you can set things like aspect ratios, there's shaders and a whole bunch of different things. You can also download different shaders if you connect this to Wi-Fi. You can go to network settings and connect it to Wi-Fi. I have it connected, but I'm not really doing anything with that right now. So there's a bunch of things you can do here, and the games list is pretty good for an out-of-the-box you know, sort of experience. And so far, so good. It has worked pretty well with this little custom, not custom, but this little you know PC that I'm running it on, this little mini PC. So let's go back to the image. I'll show you a couple more games, and then I'll give you a little taste as to how you would actually burn this image uh, to a hard drive so that you can use it as well. Okay, next up is does it support the gun recoil of the Sindon. This is the actually recoil version of the Sindon. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you, you go to the menu options and there's an option under controller and Bluetooth settings. And it says Sindon gun settings. In here you can adjust the border and you can adjust the recoil settings. The border I'm fine with, but I wanna set the recoil. I'm sorry for the change in scenery. I've never been so frustrated with something in my life. I was really 
maybe not in my life, but I was really wanting to have this be a plug and play image on this B-Link PC. And I don't know why, but I kept getting tons of random gun disconnects. I'd plug it into a different USB port, it would kind of work, and then it would stop working. I'd enable recoil, tracking would stop, but the recoil would work. I just couldn't get it working right. But the crazy thing is, is I had this running in this room, in this very room all week last week. And the reason why is because I was like, I want to battle test this so that when I do present it to you, it's a good experience. But I don't know why, I don't know what the issue is, but so far, and this is just my experience, you may have a completely different one, but I want to say like proceed with caution and don't expect a whole lot. If I run it on the Batocera 35 image for this particular build, it seems to work okay, but it works better on this Dell PC I have down here. It seems to consistently work on the third 35 image. And if you're looking for this image, I had to write down the name of it because I knew I'd forget it. I'll put the name of it. If you're interested in this image, search for this. It'll be in the link of the description of this video. It'll say search for this. And if I remember to tell Mason when he edits this, I'll have him put the name of it right here right now so you know what to search for in Google. Maybe I was just trying to do too much with that mini PC. It seems like if I put it like right now, the gun is tracking and the recoil is working consistently with this Dell PC. I cannot get it to consistently work with this BE link. So I, I don't know, it might be just this particular configuration with Bat Ocera that just something it doesn't like about this. I don't know if it's the USB ports, I'm not sure. Something it doesn't like about this. And I thought how cool it would be to show you on a little small form factor PC. Like how cool would that be? But now I don't wanna do that because I just feel like I'll still show you how to burn the image, but I feel like I don't wanna, I, I wanted it to be an out of the box, here you go, boom, do this, copy me kind of thing, and then you'll be good to go. But I can't consistently get it to work. So right now I'm using like an older Dell, seems to be working fine with that. What I wanted to show you before was the the settings on on Bato Sarah image so you can go to controller and Bluetooth settings and you can go in and set the gun settings so it lets you do two things the border size and the recoil now gun is single press so single press if you want it to be machine gun like maybe when you're in t2 this will actually set it so when I hold it down see I'm gonna lose my cursor aren't I no there we go okay so it's got that motion. So if you go into a game like T2, you'll see it will have a constant motion, which is which is kind of cool if you're, you know, that, that game would be like that in real life, right? The, the real T2, the real arcade game does have repetitive shooting like that. Now keep in mind that has a much better solenoid than what's in this Sindon light gun. So here, we'll go, to, we'll go to T2 so I can show you this function actually working. The other thing I wanted to show you guys is just, th this image is cool, but I, I feel like I had a bad experience with it. I don't want you to, I don't want you, my bad experience to taint yours, but I definitely had issues with this. Let's see. One thing I almost forgot to mention is calibration issues. Let's say you feel the gun is not tracking the way it should. What you can do is on the main screen here, you take your gun and you press the left D-pad for about five seconds. And when I do that, what you're gonna see is the crosshair returns to center. You then aim appropriately at that target Pull the trigger and now it actually restores or recalibrates your gun. So if any time you feel like the tracking is a bit off, you can do that from the main screen here and it should resolve any calibration issues you have. You have your missile button right here. So yeah, the, the recoil works pretty good. The tracking's a little off because I think of where I'm standing and everything, but but for the most part, this works pretty good. So anyways, I, just, I wanted to show you guys that so you can see the recoil does work in this image. And there's a bunch more games, you know, there's House of the Dead, there's a bunch of things. I, I, the whole purpose of this video wasn't to show you every game, but I was really hoping for a better experience out of the box. The guy that made this is Retro Lizard. He sells a dedicated version of this drive you can buy with a PC that's all pre-configured and everything. But this is obviously DIY. So I'm gonna show you now how to burn this image. We'll wrap up and I'll give you some final thoughts. Okay, so how are we gonna get this image bootable in our PC? It's an old Dell PC. Now that old Dell PC happened to have a 500 gig boot drive, but this is a bootable Linux image, this Batocera image. So we're gonna replace our Windows boot image with this Batocera image. So you could put it on this uh, drive. Yeah, I could hook up this drive to this device right here and burn the image to this. 
Uh, however, I just thought for performance reasons, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it on an SSD. Now, if your computer you're using has an M.2 device, I'll have a link to this, but this basically you put it in here uh, like so, and then um, you could basically burn the image onto that. But we're not going to do that. We're going to actually use this SSD drive as our bootable image. So if you have any older Dell PC laying around, you could probably use this. So basically you're going to put this like that. And then now you will see this pop up in Windows and then I'll show you how to burn it. Okay, excuse my messy desktop here, but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the file we wanna burn. So the image we wanna burn is actually called this Retro Lizard Batocera Light Gun image. Now this image, we're gonna make sure that this image is uh, is the right one. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you look at the link or in the description of this video. Sorry, it's not gonna be a link. It's just gonna be the name and you're gonna search for that and then you'll be able to find this image. So you download it, unzip it or uh, decompress it and then you'll end up with this image file. Once you select this image file, you're gonna select the drive you wanna burn this to. And the drive that I'm gonna burn this to is gonna be that SSD drive I showed you earlier. Hit select, hit flash. Yes, I'm sure you're gonna get a pop-up message that says this, hit yes. And now it's gonna start burning this image. It's gonna take a little while to burn this. It usually takes like 15, 20 minutes. So let this burn. By the way, the size of the drive doesn't really matter. Even though it's a 128 gig image, you could use a much larger drive. That's fine, but there's really no need to. Put your drive in, let it start burning. At the time that the image is completed, we'll do a verification too. You don't have to do it, but I think it's good practice. Let it do the verification. At this point, you can take the drive out when it's done and then put it into your Dell PC or whatever PC you decide to, to use to do this. At that point, it should just boot straight into the Batocera image. I'll show how to install it, even though I think everyone here knows how to do that. I'll put it into the PC, and then you'll see when I fire it up, it will uh, launch Batocera. Just so you're aware, the PC I'm running is this Dell Optiplex 3020. They run about 100 bucks, And then the graphics card I'm using is an older low-profile... GT 1030. So this retails for about $92. This one, for some reason, this used to be really cheap and they went up in price, but it has to be the low profile version to fit in the uh, in this Dell 3020. But this is more than sufficient for what we'll be doing here. Okay, once that image is done burning, you're going to open up the PC. Just got to have these two screws right here. Now, I had already done this to this one, so it's going to look a little different than, than yours. But so basically, you're going to have this cage right here that has the either hard drive or SSD in it. Uh, so, so you would remove all this. Basically, you'd, you this is the drive I had in there. I have it wedged in there. But basically, there's this little notch right here. You'd push it this way, and it unlocks this whole uh, piece right here. Hold on. You can, oh, shit. <laughs> I just broke it. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> just ignore what I just did. But anyways, this piece comes up. Ah, uh, shit. Come on, man. This is this, this part for the course for today. I swear everything today has gone completely terrible. But anyways, this comes out. Then this whole tray comes out. But long story short, and then your hard drive would be right here. Or, or your SSD. It might look slightly different because there's a couple different builds. But anyways, long story short, what you're going to want to do is gain access to wherever the hard drive or existing SSD is. You're going to pull that out because that's your boot drive. And you're going to put on the new one that we just burnt. So you're going to pull that out. You're going to put it in here. And then, um, and then we'll, we'll boot it up together so you can see exactly what you get. But, um, but if it's all done correctly, it will boot up into Batocera. Now, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to kind of shove this shiz back in. I'm going to tuck this drive down here by the graphics card just because it's a solid state. It's not going to be moving or anything. So I'm going to tuck it right there. We're going to put the cover back on it and we'll boot it up together so you can see the first time what you get. It's, it's just basically going to be the same thing. It boots up the SSD drive and you're pretty much good to go. There's really not a whole lot to it. We'll boot it up and I'll show you what you get. Everything is plugged in. I got my light gun plugged in. I got my Xbox controller plugged in and a keyboard. So we should be good to go. I'm going to power it on and you're going to see what this thing boots up into the first time you boot it up. Now keep in mind, if you boot it up and the audio is coming through the PC and not your speakers on your TV, it's because your audio settings are not set to HDMI output. I will show you how to do that once this boots up. Okay, so the image is booting, so we're good there. And when it boots up, the gun should be tracking. Okay, you can see I was too close, but the gun is tracking no problem out of the box. I didn't do anything. 
So right out of the box, right after you burn the image, the gun should absolutely work without you doing anything. So unlike on Windows where you have to load up the Sendin software, it's all done for you. And I can say with a decent amount of confidence that this Dell 3020 seems to run it well. I, this is this is where DIY can have its faults, right? DIY, do it yourself. So Bat Osera may not like something about this build, right? But I got to hand it to Retro Lizard. This build does provide you with an out-of-the-box experience. But like I said, there's different PC configurations, different hardware configurations. So not everything's going to be complementary to the image. But it seems like the Dell hardware works pretty good. So I'll have a link to this 3020. I, I, I'm not providing tech support though, guys. If you are on your own, if you do this, it is a project, okay? So your mileage might vary, but I can tell you I've been testing it with this one and it seems to work. I'm disappointed because I really thought it would be cool to give you like a PC recommendation and then just boom, you know, all on this little box, but unfortunately it didn't work out. Now that doesn't mean that other mini PCs wouldn't work well with the Bat Osera image, it, they may. Yeah, at this point you could select any of the games you wanted. Now keep in mind, we rebooted this, so I will show you really fast. Uh, keep in mind, if the audio is not coming out of the TV speakers, you're gonna wanna go to system settings. And then there's a setting right here that says audio output. You want that to say HDMI. If it doesn't, it's gonna route out um, a different, a different port and you're not probably going to hear it uh and especially if you're on like a you know uh, on a tv and you want it to be routed out of your tv so just just keep that in mind the other thing is by default i don't believe the feedback settings are on so if you're using a sending gun with recoil even though auto it won't it won't do anything you're going to want to set auto to gun or machine gun if you want repetitive machine gun if you want single shot gun and then hit back and then at that point, um, it, it basically disconnects the send and then reconnects the send -in. Now you'll see when I, when I move this screen back, you'll see that uh, the recoil will work. And you're going to see that this, this is bouncing around everywhere, but it's bouncing around because of where I am. But you'll see that is 100% working. Now, the, the reason why it's bouncing around is because I'm, I'm, I'm too close to the screen. So if I, if I back off, the, actually, the further I get back, for, back from it, the more accurate it would probably be. Um, I've got a couple of like studio lights in here. Lighting is really, can be really goofy with the Sindon light gun. You have to be careful with lighting because it has this little plastic cover uh, on top of the camera. If you're getting glare on it, it will have a hard time seeing the white border. That's how this gun works. It basically, how it tracks is it, the camera is looking at the white border and now it knows what its play field is. If for some reason lighting is glaring off the camera, then it's gonna have a hard time tracking the white border, border and you'll get a lot of that jumping around. So if you're having that problem, just know that's probably a lighting thing. Something in your room is interfering with it. I, I think the image is a good attempt at a plug and play image. It is DIY, so you're gonna have to do it yourself. You know what I mean? And and um, if you wanna go down this path, it. Your mileage will 100% will vary based on what PC you choose and things like that. And you might have some problems, but it's free. <laughs> You're not paying for the image, right? The image is free. It's available to you. Uh, Retro Lizard put it together and it seems to work pretty good. Now, supposedly this image also supports gun for IR. Unfortunately, I told you my gun, my gun for my guns for gun for IR are at, at RPEG Electronics. He's updating all of them. So uh, probably in my next two videos, one of them will be uh, an update on gun for IR. And the next one will be the new Rec Room Masters cabinet Carlos over at arcade-one.com took over uh, for Rec Room Masters. He now has the rights to use the designs and everything and even changed them and updated them. So it's really cool. I have it already built in the garage. It's it's pretty awesome. So, so we'll be covering that. And then I haven't been sleeping on the arcade hobby. It's just been hotter than the depths of hell here. So I haven't been able to really do much in the garage. I got rid of a bunch of stuff, but I brought in a bunch of stuff, like a lot of stuff. So I'm not just like sitting here being like, oh, you know, I'm not a collector was kind of like a funny tongue in cheek thing. Of course I'm a collector. And of course I'm gonna buy more stuff. Come on now, you know me, I'm not gonna sit here and not buy more stuff. So we will get back to the arcade stuff, the traditional arcade stuff, but I'm having fun with this because it's stuff I can do inside in the air conditioning where it's nice and not uncomfortable. So anyways, I hope you're enjoying this content. It's definitely old school retro Ralph for sure. And uh, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So is this DIY thing decent for Sindon? Kind of, because there are no plug and play Sindon images that I know of. I think I tried a Pi one once. It didn't work very well. This Batocera image 
works pretty well when it's on the right piece of hardware. I was beating my head into the ground trying to get this to work. And it worked to an extent, but it was too flaky. It was too flaky. So the Dell seems to be pretty reliable. I will say one more tip. If you're having a problem with the gun recognizing itself, disconnect it from a USB port, maybe put it into a different USB port. With this particular build, I notice if I put it on one of the ports in the back, it seems to work better. I'm assuming they're two different USB buses and maybe that's why. One more thing. If you're going to Southern Fried Gaming Expo, which is actually, uh, it's the 28th through the 30th. So if you're going, we're gonna be premiering Token Taverns. You're gonna be able to see a special screening of Token Taverns. It's $5 to get a ticket. I'll have a link in the description to that as well. I would love it if you could come out and support the movie. I'd also love it if you just could come to the show and hang out. Things are heating up as we'll be showing the Arcade Bar documentary, Token Taverns on the big screen. 40 years later, these machines are right back where they started in an arcade bar. That's right, this movie has it all. Pinball, classic arcades, craft beer, bar flies and broken dreams. Play the game with the owner of this place and he fucking destroyed me. I might leave that in a Yelp review. It's a Token Taverns party. You should tell your friends. What were you doing last night, Mario? You closed down that bar, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. Come see the movie the way it's meant to be seen on the big screen. Ooh, boom, shock and lock it. So, uh, if you're in that area, in the Atlanta, Georgia area, consider coming and checking it out. That's it for this video. I want to hear your comments about this. Did I make your life easier or did I kind of confuse you even more? I don't know. But after this, we'll be looking at Gun for IR, some Rec Room Master stuff, and I got a lot of arcade stuff. A lot of stuff, dude. Probably everything I sold, I bought just as much back. <laughs> so, but I bought cabinets that are smaller. I have a strategy. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel and put your comments below. I want to hear from you. And that's it for now. We will see you on the next one.